Okay. All right. So when it comes to calculating depreciation in the system, um, there are quite a few fields that are involved with this. And um, before I talk about those, um, for one, they're all tracked, um, they're all stored on the item record. So when I go into transactions items, I'm going to see all of these fields on here. That's where depreciation is being tracked on the item record. And uh, these are the fields that are involved with tracking and calculating depreciation. Um, so let's talk about these first, and then I'll go in and show you an item with all of this information. So um, the first one is the method. There is a field called depreciation method on the item record. There's a section actually um, in there that just says depreciation information. Um, the default value is straight line. Um, this is the one that is most widely used by the schools, and we'll get into the different methods here in a little bit. Um, but the other one is none, obviously, if you don't want to track depreciation on the asset. And there's also a declining balance method, which is more of an accelerated depreciation um, that kind of tends to go towards the beginning of the years and then backs off at the later years of the asset. Um, the factor, factor is only used for declining balance method. So if your districts do not use declining balance method at all, and they use straight line, um, there's never a need to put anything in that factor field. The beginning date is the date to begin calculating depression. Listen to me, depreciation. <laughs> um, this is usually the same date as the acquisition date. So, and we do have um, a JIRA issue out there right now. I think that is going to go on the 1.36 release that's going to prevent backdating of that beginning date prior to the acquisition date. We were running into situations where the acquisition date was in the current year, but then they had the beginning depreciation date, they entered a prior year date, and so it wasn't calculating things correctly. Um, so um, we are going to get that fixed so that it prevents the backdating. Let's see, the original cost, obviously, how does it depreciate? What is it depreciating on? It's depreciating on the original cost amount. The life expectancy, so it needs to know how many years do you want to depreciate this asset for? So you have to have a um, number of years entered in there. Salvage value is the estimated fair value of the item's useful life um, at the end of it. Um, so this is, you know, if you go and sell it, this is how much it's worth. Um, so it's uh, not required that they put in salvage values, um, but um, they can if they want to. Um, and that basically is subtracted off um, when calculating depreciation, when the system's kind of calculating, because it, it knows that you've got this salvage value sitting out there. Um, so it doesn't really want to include that in the depreciation calculation. So we'll, again, once we get into the actual numbers of calculating, you'll be able to see that. Um, and then we've got the actual life to date depreciation field. So um, this is automatically calculated when an open period is closed. So if you don't make any adjustments, you don't recalculate depreciation manually, it will take care of it automatically when you close a period. So it's gonna contain the total depreciation from the beginning depreciation date up through the last period closed, June 30th. So that's basically the fields involved with the depreciation calculation. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on a tag here. So I'm gonna go in. to my um, instance here. Let's pick on two nine 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 eight. Okay, so I'm just going to view this. I just wanna show you where all this information's at to get you a bit more comfortable. So um, I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit. 
and your depreciation information is in this area right here. So we've got the actual storage of all of the fields in here. And we also are gonna later talk about posting depreciation adjustments or transactions. Um, so just the things, the fields I was talking about here, here's the original cost. So it needs, to, needs that in order to depreciate. And here is the information. It's set up with straight line. So I totally ignore um, the factor. My beginning date is 7-1. Um, you'll notice that the acquisition date on this one is 7-13. Not a big deal because it's within the same month. So it's always calculating by month, not like day in a month when you're doing depreciation. Um, the life expectancy says it's six years. And um, right now it's currently calculating uh, depreciation for, it looks like two years <clears throat> based on um, the depreciation beginning date. So 7-1-2020 is fiscal year 21, right? So, but at the end of fiscal year 21, when they closed, which this district was on inventory or the sample district was on inventory at that time, um, it, you know, it created an internal adjustment. And then when it, they closed 22, it then created an additional internal adjustment. So this is what, uh, when you close a period, this is what it's doing behind the scenes. That's why one, you can't edit anything. You can't do anything with internal types. Um, those are things that are stored on the system that aren't able for the user to change. Um, but that's basically where it's at. So if you add these two up, um, that is the current life to date depreciation. And we are going to go into an example here in a little bit and do our own calculation. We're going to be math experts here and do that ourselves. So that's basically where the fields are at on the item record. So just some information. Um, I know there's a lot of detail on here, but I did that purposely so that if there are things that you guys can take away from this slide to you know, offer to your districts, um, that would be great. Uh, the life to date depreciation, like I said, is depreciation for an item through June of the last fiscal year closed. So again, here's an example. My item's beginning depreciation date is 7-1. 2019. I'm currently in fiscal year 23. So that current life to date depreciation for my asset would be that beginning date through the end of June 30th, 22, which is fiscal year 22. And if that fiscal year has been closed, which I'm assuming it has, um, then, you know, it will, it's always going to update the life to date by one year. So depreciation is tracked monthly on the application, not daily, monthly. So based on that beginning depreciation date, the depreciation posted for that first year um, is going to be the you know, fiscal to date or annual depre depreciation that's going to be prorated based on the number of months that the item was actually being depreciated. So I've got an example of that. So let's say an item was added and um, it was added this year um, and that the beginning depreciation date is 1-1-2023. So when I close out 23, um, it's gonna, you know, for June, it, you have to keep in mind, it's only going to record six months worth of depreciation at that time, not a full year. Um, so obviously the next year, um, and in other subsequent years, the entire annual depreciation amount will be posted to the life to date depreciation field. When generating a book value, so we talked about the book value report yesterday. Um, that's the main report that contains uh, a lot of the depreciation information. It contains a life to date column and that's showing what the depreciation was up through June of the last fiscal year. It also contains a current fiscal year to date depreciation, um, which like I just said, is calculated on a monthly basis. 
You know, it's basing it off, uh, you know, where it's currently at at that time. And then um, the total depreciation column is going to be life to date plus fiscal to date. So like I said, when you're looking at um, like a schedule change in depreciation and that ending balance that's showing way off to the right on the report or however you're running the report for, that always is going to be life to date plus fiscal to date to give you your total ending balance for the year. So that figure should match your total depreciation on the book value report. Um, I did wanna add a little special note here um, that if you have, if a district has not closed a prior period and they opened and started a new processing uh, period. So I have 22 still open and I opened 23 and I started processing in 23, um, but I did not close 22. So if I go out and run a book value report or a schedule change in depreciation, um, those life to date figures will not be accurate because it hasn't had a chance to calculate depreciation for 22 yet because it hasn't been closed out. So that's definitely one thing to keep in mind is that if they're going in and, you know, if that's, you know, their option and how they want to do that, but they just need to know that those life to date figures aren't going to be correct until they close 22. And we do have that noted in, I believe, the fiscal years chapter, but we have a note there um, telling them that, you know, just a heads up that, you know, you're life today and beginning balances too won't be calculated and updated until they close that year. Okay. Depreciation methods. Now we're gonna get into um, the different options that are available. But before we do, um, I'm just posting some information here that um, has been given to us um, from the Outer States Office. Um, and so in order to meet reporting guidance for capital assets, governments may use any established depreciation method. So there are many different ways of calculating the depreciation expenses. Um, and those methods are established by the district's policies and procedures. So the ones that we offer in the software are, like I said before, none, straight line, and declining balance. So a depreciation method is required in our software, um, whether it's none, um, straight line, or declining. Um, because tax, our state and local governments are not subject to taxation, um, districts may not choose to use the declining balance method. Um, it seems um, just off of experience that I've had and, um, with you know, districts um, information, um, most of them use the straight line method. Um, that's the universal a method used in the public sector. Um, and it seems to be the most frequently used method by districts. So get our math hats on here. Um, so the first one I wanna talk about is straight line. And straight line is, really just a straight calculation because it's um, estimating it, um, what the depreciation is minus the salvage value and it's spread out proportionally over the estimated life of that asset. So here's the basic formula for a just general straight line depreciation. Original cost minus salvage value. Obviously, if they're not using salvage value, it's zero there for salvage value and divided by the estimated useful life. It's the basic calculation for that. So here is an example of using that just basic calculation. So let's say an asset has an original cost of 10,000 and a useful life of five years, and they do have a salvage value of 1,000. So straight line would have an annual fiscal to date depreciation of 1800. And this is in basically what I'm doing is using this calculation to get those figures. So 
Um, and this is, um, I don't have it listed here, but assuming a full year's worth of depreciation, they started with the depreciation beginning date at the beginning of that fiscal year. So here is, you know, um, the, obviously the book value is 10,000. There hasn't been anything depreciated yet for the first year. So um, at the end of um, the fiscal year, when they close, it's going to calculate $1,800. And so, and then obviously the book value is going to be 8,200. And so the next year then it's going to, um, you know, take in consideration what's already been depreciated and it's going to subtract another 1,800 off of that and so on and so forth until it gets down to the end result, which, you know, if you take the 1,800 times five, that's 9,000. And so you have to take into consideration that salvage value and so it's basically been, you know, depreciated with the salvage value but still remaining. So in our inventory application, we do use a slightly different calculation for the straight line method. So here is kind of our calculation down here. And the total depreciation is as of the end of the last fiscal year, which we already know, that's the life to date depreciation. And um, so when we're doing the annual depreciation, it is calculated this way. And it's also, again, taking into consideration any part year depreciation. And like I said, if I started um, my depreciation at the beginning of January, then that's six months worth of depreciation instead of a full annual depreciation amount. So the reason why we have this formula is basically to protect um, the calculation from changes that might be made to the original cost or maybe to the life expectancy. Um, so you know if you do make it an improvement, maybe an additional acquisition was made somewhere and you know, within the life of that asset, um, then the amount of depreciation taken from that point will reflect the increase um, that was made to that original cost. So it doesn't go back and take into consideration, you know, the prior years. Those won't be affected um, when it's doing the normal automatic depreciation. Now, when we <clears throat> get into um, recalculating depreciation using the depreciate option, that's where things can um, change a little bit. And we'll get into that here in a little bit. So what I wanted to do is take you guys through like what the system is doing. Um, and I'm using just a basic example and I'm purposely including a salvage value because the salvage value makes it a little more complicated actually. So in here, here's my tag, it's $10,000 and it's depreciated over five years. Um, and it was acquired in January of 2015. So that's the beginning depreciation date for that. So that's fiscal year 15. And it does have, this item does have a savage value of $1,000. So this item should be completely depreciated in five years plus that salvage value. So let's take a look at this here. And so for this first year here, um, we have to keep in mind that, um, you know, if we just did the straight yearly depreci straight line depreciation, it really, really would come out to be um, $1,800 a year. We did this simple, basic straight line calculation. But we have to take in consideration here the life and uh, when this all started. And this started in January. And so my total depreciation for a year is going to be half of that because I'm starting in January and I'm not starting at the beginning of the year. So when I do my calculation, what I did is I took that calculation from the prior screen and added it here. And then it's going to be showing in here, okay? And so I'm taking the $10,000, which is my original cost, minus my life to date. Well, right now it's just 900, it's, it's half of the 1800. And I have to subtract out the salvage value 
And then I have to calculate my life. And so my um, whole life is five years that it's going to depreciate over. But this year, I only have half a year. So um, the age at the end of 2015 is going to be 0.5. So I take 10,000 minus 900 minus 1,000 and then divide that by basically 4.5. And my depreciation is going to be that $1,800. And then in year two, I'm going in again and I'm pulling in the, um, I'm taking the, again, the calculation. This is like the yearly calculation that it's calculating the 10,000 and then the total life to date. Well, I've got the 900 from last year and I've got the 1800. So that's the 2,700 minus the 1,000. So, and then I have to take in, I've got another, it's at an older, uh, another year. So five minus 1.5 will give me that 1,800. So that's how it's kind of doing these yearly, how it's getting that yearly calculation spread over the five years. And then I move on to the next year and same thing, 10,000 minus, it's 4,500 this time because I'm taking the 2,700 plus the 1,800 to give me my 4,500. So again, it you know, rounds out to $1,800 again. And I keep doing that until I get down to my five years. So when I add up my yearly depreciation, I'm wanting to calculate, um, that totals to $9,000. And then again, I have to take into consideration that $1,000 for the salvage value. So basically the end result after five years is it has been fully depreciated with that salvage value of $1,000 still remaining. And what I've done is I have taken this and I haven't showed you guys this yet. So this will be a surprise. Um, I am going to show you this quick. Let me get to our documentation. And uh, this was something that we've been working on for a while, and it's still a work in progress. We're still going in and, and we're going to be tweaking this because um, I don't think everything is accurate here near the bottom of it but we have created a depreciation chapter in the appendix um, that where our you know, FAQs and all of our migration stuff is at. And so this basically is going through what, we're, what I'm showing you on the PowerPoint today. Um, it's going in and showing you, um, you know, the fields involved, the life today depreciation calculation, the methods, and it's showing you examples of like a basic straight line versus how our system is calculating um, the straight line, which is basically the same. Um, and it's giving you examples of one with a salvage value and one without. So, and then we go through the declining balance. Um, and then at the end of this chapter, we talk about the different depreciation options that are available, which we're gonna get into here in a little bit. Um, but yeah, this is out here for you guys to review <laughs> and, you know, um, your districts have questions regarding depreciation. This is a good chapter to reference. Okay. Any questions regarding straight line? You probably just went, because it, it still does that to me. Sometimes I don't think I have it right either. And again, if this is something where you want more examples or better examples in the documentation, just let us know. Um, and like I said, we're still working on it, um, trying to get some good stuff out there for you guys. Um, but uh, hopefully that chapter helps. <clears throat> okay, the next one is declining balance. And I have to be honest, I don't have a lot of experience at all with declining balance other than, um, you know, trying to figure out what it essentially means. Um, but uh, that is the other option that's available in here. 
And basically, um, this is an accelerated depreciation method. So it depreciates quicker um, at the beginning of the life of the asset and then kind of tapers off at the end of it. So um, the way that this method is applied is it has to apply a uniform rate of not more than twice the straight line rate. So um, the salvage value uh, doesn't need to be considered in computing the rate, just like it doesn't with straight line. Um, so from what I understand and what I'm, you know, looking up basically, you know, online to see what the declining uh, method is, it's generally used for calculating depreciation of assets that may lose their value quickly. So with that declining balance method, you have to enter in a factor. There's a factor field that's with it. And it has to be greater than one, um, but less than two. Um, so in order for it to calculate correctly in the system. Let me show you here. So in this example below, um, the user used a balance, um, a factor method of two. So that's twice the straight line rate. So, and it's for a $10,000 asset with an estimated life of five years. So this accelerated rate is going to be 40%. Um, straight line, if I would do 10,000 for five years, would be 2,000 a year, 10 divided by five, 2,000. That'd be my yearly depreciation. That's 20%, right? But if I put in a factor of two for a declining balance method, that's double. So here's an example of how that is being this table here of how that's being um, calculated here. So, you know, that first year is taking a straight 40% off. Um, so it depreciated 4,000. So I said that accelerated depreciation at the beginning of the life of that asset. And then it's taking that into consideration then to get 40% off of that to make it 2,400 the next year. And you can see it's slowly depreciation is getting less and less until it's fully depreciated. Now in straight line, these would all be 2,000 every year. But in the declining balance method, it gradually starts with faster decline depreciation at the beginning of the life and then gradual, gradually less at the end. So that's basically um, how that declining balance method works. So I hope that was helpful. Um, that's the best way that I interpreted it. So. We do have one note I wanted to make uh, you guys aware of is that we just found this out. Um, we had a ticket come in and um, someone was trying to run the depreciation posting report. It's one of those fiscal year reports that we talked about yesterday. And um, they noticed that they had um, a handful of items that had the declining balance method and the report did not generate. It gave just kind of a, an error um, saying that it couldn't generate the report at all. Um, so uh, we thought maybe it was because the factors uh, weren't entered in for those assets. And so we tried testing it out and it still wouldn't generate. And then it, I, um, we tested it out again and we changed them all to straight line and the depreciation posting report generated. So we think it's an issue with the declining balance method. Um, it wasn't a problem for the district because they had incorrectly entered the wrong method to begin with. They should have been straight line. Um, so they were able to clean it up and move on. Um, but um, that's just one note that we want to make you aware of that our developers are looking into that. Okay. Depreciation options. So any questions before we get started um, on the actual options in the program regarding life to date, um, regarding straight line or the declining balance method? Okay. So let's talk about these um, depreciation options that we have out here.
So our first one we're going to talk about is the depreciate option that is on the items grid. So that's the option you see right up here next to the export grid items. So I've just got a screenshot down here of what it looks like. And so what this is doing is this is recalculating the life to date field from the last fiscal year closed from scratch. So it's basically resetting life to date altogether um, for, an, for an asset. Um, so this may be used after making changes to depreciation related fields like the life and stuff like that, um, where you know it warrants life to date depreciation to be recalculated. Um, and that you know might be like a conversation that the districts have with their auditors if that's something where they need to make several updates to existing tags um, because their life to date has been incorrect. Um, so they can use that depreciate option to do that. The depreciate option in here, just to tie it back to classic, is classics EIS DEPR uh, program that they had. Um, that created a projection report that they could go and it would show what the current depreciation life to date looks like and what it will look like once you run the actual option. Well, we made it similar here in inventory that when you run this depreciate, you always by default run the projection option first so that you can see a report of the before and after. And then, you know, if that's something then that they, the district, you know, reviews, maybe addresses with their auditors if they want to, um, and things they want to make those changes, then they can run the actual option to actually mass uh, recalculate their life to date depreciation. So just to note, when it's recalculating life to date, it's remember life to date is up through the end of the last year. So it is not going to calculate depreciation for assets that are added, added in the current year. It's not looking at fiscal to date. It's just looking at the life to date. Um, those you know, new assets have a fiscal to date depreciation at this point. And existing items too also are still calculating fiscal to date. Those aren't involved in the calculation at all because it's current year depreciation, not prior year, which is what life to date is all about. Um, only items whose depreciation has been changed uh, by the program will be recalculated. Now, I kind of have a little typo there. Um, it says will be included on the report. Well, we do have, I think, a JIRA issue out there, and I'll show you this when I show you a projection report, is it is currently showing items where their depreciation hasn't changed. So it's going to show, you know, 5,000 for the before, 5,000 for the after, and a difference of zero. We are going to clean that up. So because there's a lot of them that are on there, you know, you know depreciation is fine. Uh, we just haven't removed those. But, you know, our intent is to get these so that those items who um, only have changes will show on the report. So, and it is, um, you know, using this, they do have to proceed with, with caution on this because like I said, it is totally resetting the life to date calculation. And I wanna explain why they should kind of be careful with it. They had to in classic two. Um, the EIS DPR, we always, you know, said proceed with caution on here because of the way it kind of disrupts the historical tracking, basically, of an asset. So um, we'll get into appreciate and go in and look at that here in a little bit, but I want to explain why they should be, you know, careful with this. So here's an example of why. So here is my asset that I have been tracking for five years. And it's, you know, 10, uh, the yearly dep depreciation is $1,000. So five years, uh, $5,000 uh, depreciated over, you know, five years. Um, so in here, in year four, um, they did an additional acquisition, thus updating the original cost from 5,000 to 7,000. So that updated um, the yearly depreciation on here as well 
um, because now we've got you know a couple more thousand in the original cost we have to depreciate out. So basically, this is what it's doing every year. The first year it was a thousand, second year a thousand, third, and then the fourth year it was two thousand, and then the fifth year it was two thousand. So it's you know, I know that you know the system isn't keeping track of all this historical. But, you know, the current application isn't keeping track of all these historical amounts. They're not stored somewhere. Um, but, you know, going back and looking at a report from a prior year, you know, even, you know, ones that they had from EISCD, it will show that yearly depreciation, you know, of $1,000 in year three. And then it's going to show a yearly depreci depreci depreciation of $2,000 in year four. Um, and that's kind of like a red flag, like what happened? Why is it higher? Well, that's because we increased the original cost. Um, so that's how the regular, you know, yearly automatic life to date depreciation is calculating on the system. Now, if I go in and purposely want to recalculate it using the depreciate option, um, this is basically um, what will happen. Um, is that it looks at that $7,000 and says, oh, you have this item, you want to recalculate depreciation. It was for $7,000. Well, not really. It was for $5,000 for three years and then $7,000 for the last two. But the system doesn't know that. So it's going to look at the $7,000 divided by five years. And it's basically, you're going to get the same res end result. It still is going to depreciate out the same way. But you, but you notice, you know, it's going to be fourteen hundred every year, and not what the proper historical amount was. Um, so, again, this would be, you know, if they're, you know, running this, um, and you know, and and looking at the information now and running a report, and it's showing for the last year it was fourteen hundred. That's just something to keep in mind because in a prior year report it might be showing, you know, 2000, or it might be showing 1000 for the first year. And you're like, well, why, you know, um, is that, you know, is that what it is now? Well, you really can't tell per se. Um, because, you know, like I said, those, all these historic yearly amounts aren't being tracked on the system. But it's just that that historical um, tracking of the depreciation has been altered. A little bit. Um, so that's, you know, just giving you a rundown of just what that will do. And what is nice about um, the depreciate um, option is, like I said, it will create a projection report. And when you run through the projection and you look at everything and it looks good, and maybe the, the district, you know, talks to their auditors about it and the auditors are good with it as well. Um, and I think it's really mostly a concern with those items that have been depreciated for several years where lots of changes have been made. Maybe they've had 20 acquis additional acquisitions added on to it. So, and so that could have altered some of it, um, definitely, in the way it was tracking depreciation. And for some reason, you know, this all happened in classic. And it got moved over as is into redesign. And now they're running the depreciate option and going, whoa, I got like a $2,000 difference from the before and after. Where'd this come from? It could have come from somewhere in classic where, like I said, additional acquisitions were added or maybe the useful life was altered and they never recalculated depreciation after that. Um, so those type of things um, can come to the surface now. Um, they did in classic too, but maybe they, you know, just didn't run, you know, the depreciation report to recalculate things or made a correction manually to the life to date. Um, but if they're looking at this these things now and see this, um, that's, you know, something that they can discuss with the auditors. You know, what, how do you want us to go about doing this? Do you want us to run depreciate um, and recalculate it um, based off what the current original cost is, or do you want us to make a specific adjustment on that item 
um, using a depreciation transaction. So just a couple of things to um, keep in mind. So before we start on the next option, let's go in and test this out here. All right. I'm gonna go pick on a particular item. And let's take a look at this one. All right, and so I'm looking at this item. It's capitalized. I go down to the depreciation information over 20 years. So the original cost is 44,000. The current life to date is 29. Um, I'm sorry, it's 440,000. And the current life to date is 295. So obviously not fully depreciated yet. And since they've been on um, uh, inventory here, it's tracking, you know, when they close out the year, it's tracking the internal life to date for every year, the yearly depreciation. And so <clears throat> in here, I'm going to go ahead and close out of the item. And I am just going to select this one and run depreciate projection on this. You know, in fact, I'm going to show you, I'm not going to be specific here. And I'm going to select them all. and run a depreciate. And so here is where I was talking about how um, we wanna clean this up because a lot of these tags do not have a difference. Their life to date before and their life to date after recalculating is the same. So this report will be much, much, much smaller, probably just less than a page um, once we get that cleaned up. But um, as you, you know, I'm just kind of scrolling down, but you can see there are a handful of items that have a difference in their life to date depreciation. Um, so yeah, you can see most of them, the depreciation's okay. So um, this land one, is one that I was um, referencing before. So the before was 295,000, but the after is 321,000. So it's saying I've got a $26,000 difference. Um, and like I said, this could be based on a lot of things. It could be based on additional acquisitions, um, useful life. I'm banking on useful life may have been changed or something, um, or you know just wasn't calculating. Um, or the calculation wasn't being up to date or updated um, throughout the life so far. This is a you know an asset that has quite a few years that it's going to be on the system. Um, so the chances maybe that you know it may not be correct, you know, is realistic. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to kind of look at that item again, and I'm going to look just at the acquisitions against this. I'm assuming there's a lot of acquisitions against this one. Oh yeah, so we've got quite a few. And as you can see the dates on here, um, that it was, they did additional acquisitions throughout several years here up through 2013. So obviously this all occurred in classic. Um, and so it could be that the life to date just for some reason or another um, wasn't updated you know, correctly in classic and, you know, it, brought, it was brought over that way. And, you know, if this is something where they, you know, show the auditors, you know, the difference here or the auditors catch it as well, um, you know, the auditors are like, you, you can go ahead and recalculate it, um, then they can use that option and go in and actually select that particular item again. and use the depreciate and recalculate depreciate from scratch. Um, one thing that I've noticed um, in doing this, and it's probably maybe warrant more discussion 
um, with the developers is, like I said, before I do this, let me do it again. So here are the two internal transactions. Here's my current life to date, 295.041. That's what I'm seeing on here, 295.041. The system thinks it should be 321.289. So I'm gonna put in my math hat and I am going to look at this myself. And what I'm gonna do is try and see if what the, system saying is actually correct. Um, so, and I, I highlighted this particular one. So again, this started back in 2007 in December. So that's fiscal year 2008. So what I've done is I've taken, taken the original cost of that asset divided by 20 years, because that's its useful life. So taking that divided by 20 years, the yearly depreciation is about 22,031. Just doing a straight line depreciation. Well, that first year was only for seven months. So I have to count the, the month that it started depreciating. I can't just go from January, I gotta count December in there. So that's seven months. So I gotta take this yearly figure, divide it by 12 months to get my monthly, like to date. Um, and then from there, for 2008, I have to take that monthly calculation times seven months to give me what my life to date was for that first year that it was acquired, 12,851 and some odd change. And then from 2009 through, I'm in 23 right now, fiscal year 23. So 2009 to 22, is 14 years. So if I take that yearly rate times 14 years, that's 308,439. So if I take that plus my first year, so these 2009 through 22 are my full depreciation years. My first year was 2008, that's only seven months worth. So if I take the 309 plus this 12,000, from the first year, that equals 321,290. Now with all of these extra decimals on the cents over these years, I could be maybe a dollar off, maybe not. Um, but that's what, you know, I think it should be just based on a straight calculation. Um, so when I go back and actually look at that asset again, I think it should be 321,290. Um, I'm pretty close because this is what the system projected. Um, so I'm less than a little over, uh, no, less than a dollar um, difference, which could be because of all of these odd cents roundings throughout the years. So, um, so if you know, if you know, I came up with the same thing the system is, and checking this out with um, you know my auditor. And he says, yeah, you know, you can either do the recalculate and just totally reset it. But again, it's, you know, I think about all the historical tracking that has been done, or you can post a depreciation transaction in the item for the difference here for the 26,000. Um, so those are the, actually the two ways of handling this. So, you know, going back in here, Like I said, I could just go in. I already did the projection. I know what it is. So I can basically go right back in here and select this, click on depreciate, and then do the actual. And I uncheck the projection and it's going to um, generate it again and um, recalculate my depreciation for that. And I just did the, the um, just that tag, which makes it nice too, because um, I'm not affecting everything. And the old classic program, the ISDPR, it was all or nothing. And um, so now you get the option of selecting specific items and re basically resetting their uh, depreciation. So if I go then in here and I see land IMP here, and I do see the before and the after, and it's the 26,000 uh, difference. 
um, then I should be able to see this 321-289 now on the actual item. So I'm gonna go in and take a look at that item. And here's the 321-289. Now you'll see that it did update things in here. Um, it removed those internal transactions because I reset life to date. So it's showing me my new life to date figure is 321289. And then, you know, this obviously matches this. So that's how it's currently being reflected. Michelle, I have a question for you. Yes. Okay, so if you have any acquisitions against that, how would that affect this? Wouldn't you have to go through and do that calculation for every acquisition if it's capitalized? No, not for the acquisitions. Those acquisitions are tied in to that original cost amount. So okay. there's nothing on the acquisition side that you need to make adjustments for. It's all looking at, you know, those. All the total of all those acquisitions equals the original cost. So it's just looking at that original cost and going from there on okay, the item. So those, those are actually included in the original yes. cost. Okay. A absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So just kind of <clears throat> touch, touching upon that a little bit. The land, the, the, all of these amounts that are showing here should equal the original cost of the item when you look at it in the items record. So the original cost comes from what was, you know, all the acquisitions, as long as it is updated. Um, that was one thing we touched upon on the first day, as long as, you know, like there, here's their original acquisition when they first started. Um, and then from here, they're, you know, going in and creating additional acquisitions against this item, as long as they have checked the update original cost then it will be included and um, in the original cost amount, it will automatically update that. So as long as they've been doing that this entire time for all these items, it looks like they have, because I see update original cost is true. Um, then this entire amount should be the, should match the total um, original cost amount on the item. Okay, great, that makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome. So what we're going to get into next is the other option. Um, so instead of resetting the life to date, um, what this is going to do is allow you to post additional depreciation transactions to a specific item. Um, so when I've got a screenshot here of an, a particular item, and I'm just showing the depreciation information here. So the life to date field is not a modifiable field. If I go in and edit an item, I can't go in here and change this. You could in class it, um, and we locked that down um, just because you could put whatever you wanted in there and you could have totally you know, uh, messed up your life to date. Um, so what we um, did instead is uh, we locked that field down. And um, if you do need to make changes to it, you can, one, do the whole recalculate option, or two, you could go in here and create a depreciation transaction in order to update the existing life to date. Um, so you have to be in edit mode in order to activate the create option. Um, it can only be created, um, depreciation tra transactions can only be created for active items. So obviously, if this item is disposed of, you're not going to be able to do that. Um, and also, it they have to not be fully depreciated yet. That wouldn't make sense. If they're fully depreciated, why would you be creating a depreciation transaction? Um, you know, So you can only do this for active items that haven't been fully depreciated. And it can only be done for the um, current year that you're in. So I'm in my current year is 2023. When I click on create to add the item, it automatically populates 2023 in the fiscal year. So if I did this in 23 um, and I created the, dis, the depreciation transaction and then I changed my year, my current year to 2022, 
and I went into this item to take a look at it and I wanted to remove that depreciation adjustment I did, I can't because I my current year is 2022. I did that in 2023. So I would have to switch my year back to 2023 in order to delete it or edit it. Um, so um, that's just another heads up on how that works. So the amount entered will be added, or if you're entering a negative depreciation adjustment, um, or subtracted to the existing life to date amount. So this is just an example. Um, so here I've got uh, my current year is 2023. And here um, I closed out fiscal year 21 and it posted an internal life to date uh, amount. And then in 2022, um, it posted another one. And then in 2000, or yeah, in 2022 as well, I made a manual adjustment by creating a depreciation transaction for $200. So let's say, you know, the auditors were auditing and found that the life to date was off by a couple hundred dollars. And they said, I'd like you to go in and update the life to date depreciation. That's where, you know, the user can go in and then make that adjustment. Um, and put in whatever description they want, add in the difference, so that $200, and that will then increase this by $200. So let's go into that. I'm going to go in and I might have one here. Let's pick on a tag. Oops, I got to get into items first. And I want to go in, and I'm just going to go right in and edit. And I'm going to go down here. And here is my original cost. Here is my depreciation information spread out over 40 years. Here is my life to date um, amount that I currently have. Here are the trackings that have been made since um, the district has been, um, has migrated over from Classic. And so in here, um, the uh, amount is off. Maybe the auditors have caught it and said, your life to date is off by a specific amount. Um, so what I need to do is, um, they want me to go ahead and make an adjustment. And let's say, you know, this is a, you know, a letter or something that they got or from their uh, auditing, auditing results um, showing them that they need to go in and increase the life to date depreciation by $2,000. Um, so, or maybe they ran um, the uh, depreciate report or projection and they found a handful of items that had differences and they did their own manual correction or calculation and they confirmed that those new values are correct. But instead of recalculating, they want you to come in here and do a depreciation adjustment. Like I said, that's another way of doing it. So um, and if that's um, what they want you to do, all you would do is go in and click on create. And you'll see right away that the type will be adjustment. Internal is behind the scenes what the system is doing, whether it's when you close a period or whether you run the depreciate option. Um, when you're doing an actual depreciate transaction, it's considered an adjustment because you can go in here and um, you know, change these, delete these, things like that. And let's say, you know, they ran the depreciation adjustment um, or the depreciate uh, report and they said, you know, there is a difference there of $2,000 I want you to add because that's correct. Um, let's say 50 cents or something like that. I click on save and what it did is it increased my life to date by $2,000 and 50 cents. Um, so that's basically how that's done. If I put in the wrong information here, I can go in and edit. If I got to put in a description, I can go in and edit it. 
because I'm in 23 is my current year, I can go in and delete this. So, um, so that's, you know, if I was in 2024 now, um, I wouldn't be able to go in and delete the 2023 unless I made 2023 current. And that would allow me then to go in and get rid of that, which will affect my life to date depreciation. Um, so those are just things to consider uh, when you know making those changes. If you don't want to make those, you don't want to switch the year, and you want to you know correct this that you made in a prior year, you can do another depreciation adjustment to make the correction to back that out in the 2024 year. So those are just different options. And what I would recommend is just playing around with this. You know, um, in a test instance, go in, close a year, you know, see what happens with these adjustments that you made. How do I go back and change them? Um, what does that do to the reports and stuff like that? So you get a little more familiar with how that works. And one thing to keep in mind too, is that I made these changes here. I have to remember to save too. I can't just close out of here uh, and make sure that that all gets saved in here. Oh, I got a question. If there are depreciation adjustments on an item and in a later year, the item's depreciation is recalculated using the depreciate button, how do these adjustments impact that action? Well, like I said, if you're going to use that depreciate option, it's resetting the life to date. So when we, when I showed you that prior one where it had adjustments, and if it had actual depreciation transactions in there too, and I go in then and run the depreciate, when I go back in and look at that, um, the, the options underneath the depreciate, I'm only going to see the current recalculated life to date. Those others will be removed. And it's just, it's basically has reset the life to date. Great. That made sense. Now, um, I, you know, when I was, you know, looking at this the other day and kind of uh, reviewing some of this information, um, and I noticed, you know, that when I ran the depreciate option, that it did um, kind of reset this and remove these and put the brand new um, amount in there. That, you know, did make sense to me because I'm totally recalculating depreciation. So it's basically... If I run the depreciate and it says the new value is going to be, you know, this figure, and I do the actual run and I come back in here and all of this has been removed, except now it contains a depreciation internal transaction with this amount. To me, that, that makes sense because it's totally recalculated the, and totally reset the life to date depreciation. That's why that depreciate option should be um, used with, with caution because of what it is, you know, doing out there. Um, so that's kind of, you know, how that, the big difference between those two. Okay, oh my gosh, it's only been an hour. I'm, I'm doing so well today compared to uh, the last couple of days. Um, going back to my PowerPoint here. Um, those were the, basically, um, the, you know, steps to depreciate, really. We have those two. Um, one thing I wanted to show you before is I know that some of you may ask, I want to go to the documentation here. Some of you may ask, what about spreadsheet imports? And can I go in and update the life to date? on a particular um, spreadsheet. And I know that, um, I think somebody had asked that, and I think when they went in, and I'm gonna get over to our system import. I'm gonna go to the item import type. Um, when they introduced those depreciation transactions, 
Um, and the reason why we introduce those depreciation transactions in the item is because we didn't want them going in and just randomly updating a life to date figure, right? Because classic lets you do that. Um, and um, just to go into the actual life to date depreciation field and make changes, um, you know, it just didn't have a lot of good auditing behind that, you know, in classic. Um, and, you know, now we're enforcing it either by totally recalculating it using the depreciate or making a depreciation adjustment. Um, and so you've got two ways that, you know, inventories is auditing that much better, you know, in the system. If we allow them to go in and just willy nilly update the life to date on a spreadsheet, that really isn't any difference than them going in and just manually changing the life to date field like, like they were able to do in classic. So what we did is we um, have a note here that when it comes to the life to date depreciation, um, we don't recommend using the spreadsheet imports to update it um, because of you know, all of these other options that we have available. So we have a note here that really this should only be done for those uh, districts that are starting new, um, where you've got archived um, items from archived periods that need to come in with their life to date. Um, so that's where we, why we put this note here in regards to that. Okay. So what I provided here were just some links um, to our user manual, our general procedures, FAQs, which um, we need to go in and kind of look at those to see if some of those need to be updated and add new ones for sure. Um, our inventory release cap notes and our inventory uh, and, um, and you know all of this information here in our overview section. Um, that's all, you know, stuff that you guys have access to and use. And if I go back here just for a sec and look at our overview training, um, we did add yesterday's information in here. The recording from yesterday has been added, the full recording. And we also went in and broke down um, the different chapters in yesterday um, so that, you know, if you wanted to go back in and review, you know, the schedule change and fix assets, it'll take you right to that portion. And so we also added the non-GAAP stuff. So we're going to be doing the same thing with the depreciation information too. So like I said, these are good things um, to share uh, with your districts. Um, they're also, you know, these are coming from our YouTube page. So if you go out to our YouTube channel, um, this information is out here too. And you can look at the different chapters and they can pull that information from there as well. But this is open. This page is open to everybody. So you can direct your districts to this as well. Um, so if I just go back to the PowerPoint here, I do have suggestions. Um, Got a question here. Can that field be left blank on the new districts and then calculate the depreciation after the item is imported? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't see why not because if you leave it blank, you go in the item, uh, you know, from that, you know, new for those new districts, those items have been imported. And as long as they have all the necessary fields required, to depreciate, then I would think, you know, for those items that are marked for depreciation, um, that you should be able to go in and, you know, filter, select all of those at once and run the depreciate. And what should appear then on that transaction, in the depreciation transaction is, is the internal adjustment that was made for the full amount of whatever that life to date is that the depreciate option calculated. So yeah, you should be able to do that. I don't see why you couldn't do it that way. So that is another uh, good option, Sharon, thanks. Um, so future inventory trainings, these are just thoughts that I put out there that I didn't know if, um, you know, we can always add 
uh, trainings. You know, our our schedule is pretty full this year, but um, we do have a few Fridays open still. And if you guys feel that you need more training in inventory specifically, um, like a deeper dive into spreadsheet imports or setting up a new district on inventory, um, we're still working out some kinks on that. Or if you want to do, uh, you know, more information about just transaction processing FAQs, um, stuff like that, you know, we can definitely uh, create more training sessions out there for inventory. So um, I am going to be sending out um, evaluations. I didn't do the ones from yesterday, so I'm going to send out the eval from yesterday and today. And if you guys want additional training on inventory, please include in there what specifically you would like to see covered. Um, then I'll take a look at all those and we'll see if we can get something scheduled here um, this year um, on our registration page. Okay. Any other questions? All right, I finished before 10.30. That was my goal. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Have a great weekend. You too. You too. Ciao.